Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here, and today I want to talk about a tweet I made on September 18th that has given me a lot of pause to think about whether I have the, the right to say such a thing and to actually look back and examine whether what I said was even true. So let me just go ahead and show you that tweet right away. So it's this one, and what I wrote was, in the last 500 million years, across six mass extinctions and countless rises and falls of global temp and sea level, the only time the climate changed faster was 66 million years ago, when Earth got hit by a 10-kilometer asteroid that killed off 75% of all species. What's happening now is number two. All right, so that's a kind of um, amazing thing to say, right? And if you want to lose your credibility really quickly, you'll say something like that without having any evidence to back it up. And I had a number of people in the comments ask me for some references to this. And I gave them a few, but I did not really spell out the entire case I was making. What I'm surprised by is that nobody else has even made this case up to this point. So I'm going to try and make it right now and show you what I know. So first of all, let's just look back over the climate of the last 500 million years. And what we get is this um, graph right here that roughly tells you the temperature of the planet. And the problem is when you're going over 500 million years, there's going to be times when um, you didn't get good, <laughs> the ways that you measured it weren't very good. You had to average over a period of a million years. Um, the further back you go, the less accurate it is and so on. But there is this um, recent research paper written that essentially collected all of the available and known information from a bunch of different um, research that's been done. And you can see in each little segment here, they give you the reference paper. And I will give you a reference to this particular article in the comments below. And so as you look at this, you say, okay, all right, the temperatures have gone up and down. Sometimes here we are in the um, hundreds of years, here we are in the thousands of years, 200,000, 400,000, up to a million years. Here we are between 1 and 5 million years, between 5 and 100 million years, and then finally between 100 million and 500 million. So there are these sort of five categories of time and, and a semi-logarithmic type of display. And so you might ask, well, if I'm saying that the climate is changing faster now than at any time except for when the asteroid hit the planet, what about all these times here with all these spikes? Maybe it moved really fast there, or maybe, maybe there was a spike back here that because we don't have accurate enough information, we couldn't keep track of it, right? Well, yes, but there is a way of getting around that. There's a little trick, and that is the basis of my argument. The other thing I want to put over here is right on the right-hand side. You notice where we are at this moment, and here are the projections up to the year 2100 for global temperature rise. And what we see here, this is in degrees Fahrenheit on the right-hand side, and we're talking about C over here on the left-hand side. So they're talking about um, the RCP 8.5, which was the worst-case scenario forecast. We may get there, it may be worse, it might be better than that. Um, open for debate. But one thing to keep in mind is that this artificially ends at the year 2100. It is well known that even given the current CO2 in the atmosphere, the total warming effect from the current CO2 will not be complete until the year 2300. So we should continue to see warming clear up to 2300. And let me just show you, this is from the uh, world, uh, the AR5 back in 2013 with their projections out to the year 2300. And we can see that um, the temperature change, you notice how it keeps going up? All of these go up different amounts. But roughly speaking, this is the 8.5, this red line, and it's going up here to about 6 degrees C. And it's not really peaking for hundreds of years. The only time it goes down is if in this almost impossible 
um, RCP 2.6, which we're absolutely not on track for that. We are somewhere between 4.5 and 6.0 in our actual um, work. But at any rate, this is very interesting graphs to look at. You can also see if you've been paying attention to the AMOC that it is um, slowing down. It's going to stop pretty soon, right? According to these predictions, it's stopping pretty soon. It's going to go in reverse pretty severely. That's going to be another really huge issue. Um, we have atmospheric CO2 um, going over 500 and up from there in fairly short order. Um, it's all looking pretty bad. Um, so what we can absolutely say on this graph is that this red dot here will be far surpassed in the next 200 years. And um, more likely, if we go to the plus six line here, we're looking at about 10 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit of warming by the year 2300. Now, look for a spike of that particular height over the last 200, uh, 500 million years, and you simply won't find it. So first of all, we do have this incredible spike happening right now. But here's the real trick to knowing that the climate is changing faster now at any time, except for when um, the asteroid hit. It's that we are undergoing an extinction event. We are undergoing the sixth great extinction event on this planet. And so what is driving an extinction event is climate change. So if we just look back historically at all of the extinction events that have happened in the past, we can ask the question, how many extinction events are there? And then for any one of those extinction events, how long did that take um, from its beginning until it sort of hit its maximum level of extinction? How, what was the duration? And so understanding that we are currently in an extinction event, we can measure climate change, the, the fastest rate of climate change over the last 500 million years by looking at all extinction events during that period and ask, did any of them happen faster than the one that we are currently experiencing? So the um, answer to that is actually that people know a lot more about extinction events than they do about the changes in the climate over some random 50 year period. So once you know there's been an extinction event, then you can focus on that piece of information rather than what was the temperature last Tuesday, what's the temperature 50 years later, which is a much more difficult question to ask. So this is a little bit of logic you have to understand. Because climate change very, very fast climate change creates an extinction event. We are in an extinction event. We can then look at the other extinction events to gauge how fast the climate changed. And we know that because fast climate change creates an extinction event, that we can simply focus on those to know whether the, um, what level the climate is changing compared to um, all of recorded climate history for the last 500 million years. I hope that explanation was okay for you. But anyway, I went looking and there are many, many, many research articles on the extinction events. I am just gonna show you one of these that talks about um, the, these events and gives some sort of time frame for how long they took. So first of all, the guy who wrote this article is Michael Novacek. And just to give a, um, a little bit on him, he is the senior vice president of science and the curator of the division of paleontology, the provost and professor at the Richard Gilder Graduate School. Um, seems like a pretty good guy. He went to Berkeley, that's a good school. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and look at what he wrote. So he goes through these last six mass extinctions and he talks about um, each one of these in particular and how um, it took place. So the Ordovician extinction. And this is the earliest known mass extinction. What's the cause of this extinction? It's thought that the main catalyst was the movement of the supercontinent. Um, that caused sea levels to rise and fall over periods of millions of years, all right? So we have an extinction event that took millions of years. So currently, the one we're undergoing is faster than that. 
All right, what about the late Devonian extinction? Well, that one, um, say that it took place over a huge span of time, from 500,000 to 25 million years. I think we're faster than that one. All right, what about the end Permian extinction? So this is the, the really big one, right? If anyone is worth thinking about, was it possibly faster than ours? Um, this would be the one. Well, what happened in that extinction was that a bunch of volcanoes um, let out huge quantities of CO2 over a period of millennia, right? Um, it, you can see it took more than, uh, um, uh, let's see, right, causes including volcanic eruptions and asteroids and sudden release of greenhouse gases have been proposed, but the actual mechanism is still a mystery. Well, there's been some recent research on this one in particular. I just want to share with you because it's not really well answered here. So here is the research article from Sci News. Uh, this one came out February 11, 2014. End Permian mass extinction took only 60,000 years, researchers say. All right, so that one took 60,000 years. We are much faster than that going on right now. But Again, just in case you're wondering how it happened, the, the best guess right now is a bunch of volcanoes spewing CO2. The CO2 gradually um, raised global temperatures, um, and that created, I guess the latest thinking is some algae blooms, that, the, that the, um, a lot of the water systems got infested with algae and it became toxic algae and just started killing a lot of critters. Um, but the entire story is not well told. At any rate, this is something that you might want to look into. I'll put this into the notes. So that one, the end Permian, took 60,000 years. So where, where does that put us? Well, 201 million years ago, we had the Triassic-Jurassic extinction, and that was um, suggested it's um, what, climate change, an asteroid impact, um, and you know, it could have been in the same range. Whenever you have um, an asteroid impact, that's going to be really fast. But they haven't found the asteroid, and it's not clear that, that you're going to find an asteroid for this particular one. Um, again, the, anytime you have the volcanic eruptions, that is a possibility. But those, um, if they were all at once, we would find this nice layer of sediment um, that we could say, ah, look at all these, this volcanism. We're not finding that. So instead, we have volcanoes gradually raising um, the CO2 levels over a period of time. At any rate, I just don't get the feeling that this is faster than um, the end Permian. And again, because we have this article that talks about it being the fastest one, um, it's clear that the sort of general consensus is that this, the end Permian was faster than the Triassic. All right, now what do we get to? Well, the dinosaurs, right? So, so clearly this happened very fast, right? Uh, we got hit by this huge asteroid. It um, punched a big hole into the Yucatan Peninsula threw up, uh, okay, so we had a tidal wave that was about a mile high. Um, tidal waves wiped out a lot of the coasts, the coastal sea life, co coastal ecosystems. Then we had massive fires, a firestorm um, covering the planet um, that destroyed a lot of the fires that were absorbing the CO2. And then we had on top of that a nuclear winter for a couple of years. Well, look, if all of this sort of went away relatively quickly because it's just um, aerosols that would precipitate, then you could say, well, maybe this wasn't even climate change, right? But that's where what he says is interesting. Um, the, um, what you can find here is another article that says, asteroid that killed the dinosaurs caused massive global warming. So that's the key right here, that this really truly was climate change 
Um, and then this article says the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs caused temperatures to rise by five degrees C, which is about what we're going to get by the year 2300. Um, and it stayed that hot for 100,000 years. So I call that climate change. So yeah, I'm going to say that this one beats our current situation. So what is our current situation? It is the Anthropocene extinction, and there is just a lot um, that you can read about that. Now, some people say that technically this started sort of 100,000 years ago when we started wiping out um, certain species as humans evolved and went hunting and, changed and started agriculture. We started making some species go extinct. But I think that anybody who's sort of paying attention disagrees with that um, point of view. The real point of view here is that the current extinction event started in 1750 when we started using uh, fossil fuels. And at the, at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, when we started pumping CO2 into our atmosphere. So we have an extinction event that started in 1750. It's been accelerating. It continues to accelerate. And we are right now on one of the steepest curves of the entire event that's going to take place. So we cannot use what's going on today in particular to talk about what this extinction event is going to be in full. We have to talk about the right-hand side, the very right-hand side of this graph to really truly understand it. That we're going to have a spike up here to um, four, six, eight degrees, 10 degrees Fahrenheit over a period of 50 or 100 years, at most 300 years from now in the year 2300. And that essentially has never happened before. The only time that we had a massive temperature increase like that was when we had this blast uh, furnace effect from the asteroid strike. But even that only raised temperatures 5 degrees C, right? We might get well past that. So that might have been faster to get us to a point. But once we got to that point, it was fairly stabilized. And we had the aerosols that we don't have anymore. We don't have those aerosols. They had the aerosols for a couple of years to help <laughs> cool things off before the big heating. At any rate, that's kind of complicated. So... That is my argument that the climate right now um, is changing faster any time than in the last 66 million years. Um, and if you have an argument that is different than this, please put it in the comments or drop me an email. I'm very interested especially to hear from um, paleontologists, uh, climatologists, people who specialize in this sort of thing, to see whether the argument I'm making is not correct here. So, okay everybody, um, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.